At the end of last season, Liverpool started inverting Trent Alexander-Arnold from fullback, and at the time, you may remember that I said, "So is the Alexander-Arnold experiment working?" I think it's sort of confused. <laughs> but since then, what has happened has been this. As you can see, the Premier League table since Alexander Arnold started playing as an inverted right back has seen Liverpool actually comfortably top of that table. So this means that I know nothing about football, right? Now, in order to tease out the answer to that question, what we need to do is have a little bit of a think about why teams invert their fullback in the first place. Now, there are three main reasons why teams may generally invert their fullback, and the first two are all about progressing the ball down the field. So if you bring your fullback inside, what you're usually doing is overloading in the centre of the field because a lot of teams teams at the elite level really want to be able to build up through the middle of the pitch. So you can see here against a team that are matching you up three players to three in the midfield, invert your fullback and now you have an extra player in the midfield. And the idea here is that if you have an extra player in the middle, you're now much better situated to actually be able to play the ball through lines of pressure in the middle of the pitch to get your striker in on goal in a more dangerous situation. The goal is in the middle of the pitch, so if you can build up through the middle, you're going to be much closer to that goal. It's going to be much more dangerous. Now the second reason is a byproduct of the first reason. If you've moved your fullback inside, the opposition don't want to allow you that overload in the middle, so what they'll probably do is move their outside players more narrow to make sure that this overload is prevented. Which means in this scenario, let's imagine that our back line now moves around because the right back has moved out opening space for the centre back to become a de facto outside centre back. Let's see the ball come into that outside centre back. And as you can see, you get really nice access now to this wide player. So by moving your fullback inside, what you've actually done is made much better access to progress the ball in wide areas as well. And the third and final reason why you might want to invert your fullback is for defensive reasons. So let's imagine that the red team here who've inverted their fullback lose the ball. They now have an extra player in the centre of midfield who's much better positioned to be able to deal with dangerous counter-attacks. Now, I was very quick in my criticism of Trent Alexander-Arnold moving inside, but we now have 26 games of Premier League data to get a much better sense of what Liverpool are trying to do. So let's have a dig into that data and see what's going on. Now, on the board in front of me, I've got a couple of passing sonars from the Athletics' own Dr. Mark Carey. This is Trent Alexander-Arnold before the role change, and this is Trent Alexander-Arnold after the role change. Now, let me just talk you through how to understand these sonars, because they can be a little bit confusing. What you need to imagine in this situation is Trent Alexander-Arnold is standing right in the middle of this target and he's facing this way down the pitch. And each of these segments actually represents the direction of the pass that he's going to make from that point. So as you can see, lots of passing out forward and to the left-hand side. That's natural because as a right footer, he's going to swing his foot around that way. Now, the size of the segment corresponds to the number of passes that are made. So the big overall segment is total number of passes attempted. And then the smaller segment is the number of those passes that were actually completed. And then the color of those segments show the actual average distance of those passes after they were completed as well on this scale. So as you can see in this segment, the passes that are being made directly down the field are actually of a longer distance than the ones either side of it. Now, if we move to the passing side, since Trent Alexander-Arnold made that role change, we can see still actually very similar. We can see that there's still that bias towards playing the ball across the field in that direction, but we're seeing that there's much more passes now across the field. This makes sense because he's now moved inside the pitch, so that has opened up angles into the right-hand side of the field as well. It's more centrally located, so he can make those passes into players in the wide area on the right. But interestingly enough, as you can see, his role hasn't changed too much in terms of his passing sonar. Yes, it's opened up more angles for him, but he's still playing playing the same kind of passes, but from a more centrally located area. But this role change shows up much better when we start focusing on the specific type of passes that Alexander-Arnold is making. So I love these visits that we've got here. This is again from Dr. Mark Carey. And what Mark has done is he's taken all of Alexander-Arnold's passes, he's clustered them together into similar types, and then we can see which ones are the most common that he is playing. So again, this is before the role change, this is after the role change. And if we go through the pitches, we can see the most common, second most common, third most common, etc. So if we go go back to look at the passes that he was making before his role change, we can see that the three most common are all passes that are going to end in this final band of the pitch here. That means that he's playing very creative passes, they're all heading into the penalty area, and that means that the intention of those passes is to be creative, to generate goals. Now if we move over to look at the most common passes from this season, we'll see a very different picture emerges, because of the three most common passes that Trent Alexander-Arnold is making this season, only one lot of those passes is ending in that final band, and those passes are all to the corner 
flag, so that's not into the penalty area. These are not generative of chances. This is actually moving another player into a more dangerous position to then be able to play the pass before the goal. And so if we look at the data, it's very clear that Trent Alexander-Arnold's role has changed from that of a chance creator to that of a ball progressor. Now that isn't to say that he isn't creating chances at all, but actually the nature of those chances has changed quite dramatically. So what I've got here is the chances that Alexander-Arnold has created across the last four seasons. And as you can see, there's a big change across the last three seasons to this season with a new role change. Now, one of the most famous passes that Alexander Arnold is known for is those half space passes. You'll also see Kevin De Bruyne making these kind of passes. And as you can see on this viz, the percentage of chances that he's creating from this right half space, which is the area he liked to get into in the past, is very high in the previous season. So 16% here, 20% here, and then 14% back in last season before that role change. If we fast forward to this season, we can see that number has dropped down to 11%. And the other area that I think is notable here is that he's often getting forward, particularly into the area around the corner flag, generating chances from there as a fullback, a flying fullback getting high up the pitch. And as we can see, 27% of his chances coming from there in the 2021 season. And that slowly drops down in the next few seasons. When we get to this season with the new role change, that is down to a paltry 6% of chances coming from this area in particular. And notably, the area where he's creating most of his chances from is now much deeper down the field. So you can see 20% of his chances this season are coming from the area around the center circle. And as you can see, no chances from there last season and very low percentage chances from there in the other seasons as well. So what the data shows is that Alexander Arnold's role has changed from that of a traditional chance creating fullback to a little bit more of a deep line playmaker who's interested in actually progressing the ball and when he does generate chances they are being generated from deeper on the field. So if we go back to the three benefits that you get from inverting your fullback we can see that Liverpool are getting the advantage of playing Trent Alexander Arnold in a more central space to be able to progress the ball down the field. But interestingly enough the way that Liverpool are generating that central progression is quite different to the way that other teams are generating central progression when they invert their fullbacks. Now normally what you would expect when a team inverts their fullback is that the fullback is going to come inside the opposition block and just offer a passing option so that the team can build up through the opposition's line of pressure through these short passes to get the ball into dangerous areas. What we've actually seen from Alexander-Arnold in these sorts of situations is that he's much more likely to drop outside of the block to be able to receive the ball more easily and then he's facing down the field he's able to play these really nice long passes into progressive areas and also punch the ball through into midfield areas as well. And that's because this way of playing suits his profile much more. He's not the sort of player who's going to want to receive the ball back to goal, in pressure, turn and then play from there. He's actually much better suited to receiving already facing down the field with the ball to his feet and then he can play those really elite longer passes that he's so good at. So that's the first aspect of inverting your fullback. What about the second aspect which is inverting your fullback actually gives you better access to wide areas and that makes a degree of sense because if we see Alexander-Arnold's touches before the role change, you can see they're all happening in this wide channel. After it happens, you can see he's much more centrally located. So the space in that wider area. And the big question is, who is going to fill that space? Now, Liverpool have solved this problem in a number of different ways. So here's a screenshot from a game against Sheffield United recently. And as we can see, Trent Alexander-Arnold has moved inside. And the result is that that wide area has been filled by none other than Mohamed Salah. Now, it's worth noting that in this situation, he's actually adopted pretty much a right back position. You can see Joe Gomez playing his left back on the other side, who's in a more advanced position. So what we're seeing here is Mohamed Salah moving away from those areas where he's really dangerous. And those are going to be areas closer to goal moving away from them in order to be able to receive the ball. And this is a problem for a number of reasons. One is that you want him to be closer to the goal, but also because in these situations, the winger is often receiving the ball back to goal or having to receive it on the half turn to go around the fullback. Whereas Mohamed Salah is much happier receiving the ball in behind lines running towards goal. And so to use a player like Mohamed Salah with the kind of profile that he has as a width provider in this kind of structure doesn't really work. So how about we use a different option? What about if we use Dominic Sobersloy? Here he is in the right back position. Here's Alexander Arnold in side, what is the problem here? Well, as we said before, by moving your fullback inside, you're actually overloading in the midfield area. If we then have to provide width from the midfield area with one of your central midfielders, you're actually reducing that overload again. And so what you're doing is you're taking a player from a more ideal position, making them provide width and therefore reducing their upside as well. And if all else fails, why not just use your striker as a wide option? Because what we've got here is Cody Gakbo in the same game, moving away from the central space and offering the width as well. So when it comes to the second benefit of inverting your fullback, we can see from these screenshots why you might do that. The advantages you can get, the better access you get into wide areas. But unless you have the profile of players who can fill that wide area, all you're doing is taking players from more effective positions into a wider area just to hold width. 
So what about the third benefit of inverting your fullback, which as we said is that it offers you more defensive cover from counter-attacks. Well in that area as well, there are some questions that can be asked about Liverpool, because if we look at the board we can see that the amount of direct attacks conceded by Liverpool is still very, very high. We can see Sheffield United at the top, Everton and then Liverpool, and that is not somewhere that they will want to be. Now what is a direct attack, I hear you say? Well, it's actually quite a complicated definition, so in order to answer this, I'm going to use my notes. <laughs> a direct attack is a sequence that starts inside the team's own half with at least 50% movement towards the opponent's goal, ending in a shot or a touch in the box. Now what that means is the opponent are picking the ball up in their own half, they're moving it down the field in order to take a shot or get a touch in your box. And that is exactly what an inverted fullback is supposed to be stopping. So when it comes from the three reasons why teams usually invert their fullback, we've seen that Liverpool are getting the benefit of the first one because they are progressing the ball centrally, but they're doing it a little bit different to everyone else. They're not really getting the benefit of the second one, and they're almost certainly not getting the benefit of the third one. Which raises the question, why is this working? Well, I think the answer to that question can be found in the inverse metric to the one we've just looked at, and that is direct attacks again. But rather than looking at the times that Liverpool have conceded direct attacks, I want us to have a look at the times that Liverpool have created direct attacks. And as we can see, Liverpool are head and shoulders above everyone else. You can see there's seven direct attacks above Aston Villa, who, as we know, are quite a direct attacking team as well. So Liverpool are playing football in a very direct way. And I think this changes the way that inverting the fullback works for them, because usually when teams are inverting their fullback, they want to have control of the ball, they want to retain possession, they want to move the ball down the field and get advantages from that inverted fullback. When it comes to Liverpool, they're actually using their inverted fullback just to get the ball forward as quickly as possible in order to be more dangerous in attack. Now, to illustrate what I mean, let's just take a look at this screenshot again from the Sheffield United game. Now, if we look at this, there's lots of things to like about it. We've got Dominic Sobersloy holding width, as we said. He's got the ball, he's a good ball striker, he can play the ball into the box. And in the box, we have two strikers here, Salah playing much more centrally, Kakpo coming in at the back post. They're looking for the space in the box. We also have a wide forward in Luis Diaz over here. He's gonna try and find the box as well. And here's Alexis McAllister sitting at the edge of the box to pick up anything that comes from it. Now, this is the sort of situation that you might have seen from Liverpool last season, but with one key difference. And that is, there's no player occupying this space here because in previous seasons what we would probably have seen is either Trent Alexander-Arnold being the player playing the ball into the box in which case Jordan Henderson would be here or their roles might have been reversed so this could have been Jordan Henderson and you would have Alexander-Arnold in this sort of area here ready to receive the ball to play one of those dangerous half space crosses. But why is there no one here? Well because Alexander-Arnold is all the way off the screen over here playing the pass in order to get the team into this kind of position. Now for most other teams this might be an issue because in effect what you've done is you've taken a player from your attacking unit and moved them back down the field so you're attacking with fewer players. But this actually suits Liverpool because not only do they have elite attackers who are going to be really good at finishing the chances that come their way, but the profile of those attackers actually suits playing in this more dynamic, transitional way. So Liverpool are successfully playing Trent Alexander-Arnold as an inverted fullback, but not in the way that most other teams are using their inverted fullbacks. Instead, he's being used as much more of a deep-lying playmaker who's drifting in from wide. So was I wrong about Trent Alexander-Arnold? Well, on the one hand, yes I was, because Liverpool are playing him successfully as an inverted fullback. But on the other hand, I was right about the problems that would exist if they tried to play him as an inverted fullback, as most other teams do. And this raises a deeper point about the relationship between tactics and individuals. Because when Liverpool first inverted Trent Alexander-Arnold, they were definitely trying to do what the other teams are doing, and we know that because we've got the quotes to prove it. So this is what Trent Alexander-Arnold said about his role at the end of last season. Everything was normal defensively about my role, and then with the ball, Jurgen Klopp wanted me as a second number six. The idea around it, as it was explained to me, was about improving our inside play, controlling the center, getting an extra player in that area. He trusted me to be able to do what I needed to make it work. Now the important word there is control because the reason that most teams are going to move a fullback inside is in order to be able to control the ball better both in and out of possession. But Trent Alexander-Arnold's profile didn't really suit that. But rather than forcing him into a role that didn't really suit him, or stopping the inverted fullback experiment altogether, what Liverpool did is they changed the role so it fit him and his abilities, as well as fitting the collective profile of the team. And so moving forward, maybe we'll start to see more teams using inverted fullbacks in the way that Liverpool have used Trent Alexander-Arnold, not in order to control the ball, but in order to get more upside in transitional moments. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. 
The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Ollie Kay, Amy Lawrence and Rafa Honigstein. With the latest transfer news and insight on every Premier League football story that matters, theathletic.com puts you inside football. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.